Hi, welcome to our stats. I'm Jacob Sibulski. In this series of videos, I'm going to introduce you to some predictive statistical models, such as naive base and regression, with plenty of data visualization. Welcome back. Um, this is a series of lessons about linear regression, and this time I'm going to talk about multiple linear regression. Now we're going to use the same data as was the case in a simple linear regression. Uh, it's a data about automobiles from UCI University. Um, we're going to try to predict price based on the car specification. I'm going to rely on three packages. HMISC for eliminating missing values, PSYCH for plotting uh, correlation charts, and CAR for a variety of additional functions to do with regression. Okay, let's get all three packages, go to the working directory, read the data, quickly the summary, which shows that uh, amongst many variables describing each of the CARs, there are missing values and the variables are many. Um, we have variables which could be used for predictions, such as normalized losses at target, a variety of factor or categorical variables which describe the cars, and lots of numerical variables, such as the cars width and height and weight, number of cylinders, which is a factor, engine size, and others. And one of them will be price, which is what we'll be trying to predict. Now the first thing is in regression is to eliminate missing values. Uh, regression cannot deal with that. We'll do a very simplistic approach to eliminating missing values, substituting them with the mean or the median, depending on whether the variable is continuous numeric variable or whether it is a categorical variable. And quick check, um, we have no more NAs listed against any of the variables. I'm going to pick a few potential candidate variables which we could hypothesize are good price predictors. Uh, so I picked the following variables. Here we have um, um, horsepower, uh, the miles per gallon in the city, uh, the peak rotations per minute, the curb, weight, number of doors, and price, which is our target. And we can see that some of those variables are skewed, like horsepower and price, and normally we should be dealing with that. Um, if you want to have a good regression model, we all variables should have a normal distribution. The variables should be independent. Um, they should be not correlated. Horsepower and curb weight are clearly have a high correlation and so city mass per gallon against weight are negatively correlated. We should have been dealing with that. Uh, we also should be looking at extreme values, the values which are which have a huge error from from the model and the variables we have once they're plotted against uh, the model, they should have even distribution of residuals. okay We're not dealing with any of them at this stage. The purpose of this lesson is to show how to construct the model by selecting variables suitable for that model. And in the future lessons, we'll show a more sophisticated approach to that. As is the case in all modeling, uh, whether R or any other software, um, it is important to have a training of the model and validation and possibly testing of the model. So I'm going to split here the data into a training set and validation set. And about 80% of the data will be used for training and 20% for validation. Um, some people argue that you create a model and the regression model is going to be assessed sort of internally based on the properties of that model to indicate its uh, quality. And we will rely on those quality values. However, at the end, I still want to test the model uh, the data on, on the data provided. Ideally, this should be a cross-validation uh, type of testing of the model. We're going to create a model, which is a simple linear model uh, using multiple variables. And the formula here describes such a model. 
it's a price which is an intercept with um, well, my y-axis which is the price axis and here is just three variables uh, horsepower, curb weight and city MPG and we'll be trying to estimate the coefficients of those variables in this equation so that the overall errors um, and mistake in, in price estimation could be minimized. So let's create the first uh, linear model, the first fit. Uh, price is a target, so it's on the left of the tilde uh, operator, and a number of candidate variables from a training sample. It's been created. Now let's look at the summary. And the summary of that fit or the linear model, um, the model itself remembers how it was created. It provides some simple uh, statistics uh, about the, the median, the minimum, the maximum, the first and the third quartile of uh, the residuals, that means the errors. We're trying to minimize the errors in this model. And here we have a collection of estimates of that formula. So the estimate for the intercept, the B0, uh, the coefficient uh, for the horsepower, coefficient for city MPG, peak RPM, curb weight, and number of doors. And those are the values. Now, each of those values estimated with some degree of confidence. We have a probability of whether or not we can trust this value. So three stars, it means that the probability of rejecting this uh, value is quite low, so we should keep it. However, some of those variables have coefficients which with a high probability that is wrong, which probably means we should reject it. Also, we have um, the R squared um, measure, which actually tells us how well the model explains the variation in the data, um, which is not random. So this model explains around 73% of errors or residuals from the linear model. Uh, R squared is just a very similar measure, however, it's usually a bit lower because uh, it takes into consideration the number of variables that we use to build the model. The more variables we're going to get, the higher would be R squared, and R adjusted R squared always lowers it down. So, we're going to eliminate the, the worst variable the variable we cannot trust or we trust least. So that's a backwards elimination of variables, one at a time. So we eliminated number of doors and we look at the fit again. Um, the R squared is almost identical, it actually is identical. Adjusted R squared slightly improved, but it's almost insignificant, but we eliminated the variable which does not contribute much to the final formula. Um, so by eliminating the variable, the, the model did not get any worse. Uh, the next potential candidate for elimination is peak RPM, and that's what we're going to do. Eliminate this variable, and again look at the summary of that model, the fit, um, the R squared, it actually got worse, but adjusted R squared, it got slightly better, but it's almost insignificant. Um, the model performs theoretically as well as before, but we have less variables. It's a simpler model. And again, the next variable, which is a candidate for elimination, is city, city MPG. Now the model will have only two variables. And the multiple R squared got a bit lower, not much, and adjusted R squared insignificantly is lower. The model now is such that we could trust every single variable used to build the model, which is a good thing. 
Now let's do a few plots of the model we arrived at. The first one, it shows us that um, if we consider the, the, the range of prices of, of those vehicles and zero here, it signifies the linear model, which is um, a line in terms of in case of a, of a two dimensional model, or it's a hyperplane when we have multiple variables. And it shows that some of the data points are just about above this plane and some below this plane. And if you try to fit the line into um, the distance, all the points distance around the model, you can see that it's a nonlinear fit. So it means that it's a, it has a small degree of nonlinearity, which is most likely because we didn't normalize the data in the first place. Um, it also shows us that we have about three data points which are very far away from the model. So the model does not capture them. Um, if we consider them against the mean of the sample, we would say that these var those observations um, are outliers, but since they are in relation to the model, um, we call them that they are extreme values, extreme cases. And normally we would be deleting them as well. And the model would improve after that. Let's look at the next chart. This chart shows us um, how all of the examples of residuals, um, they compare against the theoretical uh, distances from the model. And it shows that, uh, yep, we have a bit of a problem on both ends of the spectrum of all the data. Ideally, that all, all of the observations should nicely and neatly go around the line which signifies the model itself. The third, which again shows us um, the distribution of um, residuals around the linear model against um, in relation to relationship to the price of, of all the vehicles. And basically it shows that if you have um, the higher the price, we have the less observations and the scatter of, um, of observations around the model is greater. And they're very densely um, following the line in a medium or lower price range. And finally, the last chart, it shows so-called so Cook distances. Um, it identifies all of the extreme values and shows that some of those extreme values have a huge impact on the model. So they're extreme and the model it's, it has a huge, the construction of the model is hugely influenced by those extreme values which means that if we eliminate uh, observation 167, most likely the model will be more linear. Okay, so that's one of the things we will be doing as well in the next lesson, watching those charts and watching extreme values, watching the way um, the errors distribute around, um, around the model. Okay, um, now we got a model fit um, as good as it gets. Let's see whether it can predict anything and to what degree it could predict. So normally we do, we measure the model, first of all, against data it was trained on, and then against the data it has never seen before uh, during the model construction. So I'm going to do the prediction of prices using the model and the data which we had used before while constructing the model. And I actually added an extra variable to the train training sample. And I'm going to do the same thing for the validation sample. That means the system has never seen this data before. And I'm creating a new variable, predicted price for the validation sample. We've seen this before, and um, I'm interested in those values. Adjusted R squared. And let's see whether the predicted price and 
the real price are in any way correlated to that degree. Ideally, if we look at the training sample, um, the correlation between prediction and price should be more or less in that um, level of magnitude. So I'm going to compute that. And I'm going to also to calc I'm going to calculate um, the root mean square uh, difference between the predicted price and the real price for the training sample, and mean absolute error for the same two vectors. And this is the result. The result which basically says that the correlation between the predicted price and the actual price for the training set is 72% percent, which is very, very close to the theoretical um, R-squared for the model. Okay, so that's good news. Um, the second thing is, it's more as a guide, um, looking at those two values, which is the uh, amount of error, but in terms of the price units, which is dollars. Uh, on average, uh, each of the estimate was about $4,000 away from what it should be. Um, and more optimistic estimate of, um, of that error is around $2,500, which means that on average, on the set of observations that we have previously seen, uh, we're going to make between two and a half and $4,000 difference on est in, in, while estimating. Now let's do the same thing for the data the system has never seen before. So correlation, root mean square, and mean absolute error for the validation set. And here are the results. Now it looks like about 69% correlation between the prediction and the price. That's not bad. It's not that far away from the training set, validation set, the data the system has never seen, and the training set, which is almost like a recall. Okay, the, the price um, the, um, error, that means on the validation set, on average, the error is in price estimate was between $3,200 and $5,000. Considering that the vehicles are up to $5,000, it's about 10% um, error in estimation, which is uh, not bad. Uh, the system performed well. You could improve those results by uh, normalizing the data, eliminating um, extreme values, and basically uh, doing everything that we asked to do as a requirement for the construction of the linear model. So thank you and come back to the next lesson where we're going to make a much more complex model and doing the right things while creating the model. Thank you.